Irish guy, and this is me pouring cold water on the hype. Ah! Yeah, I have about as much hype as daffodil soup. Not really sure why I did that. But today, I'm gonna go through every Premier League club and just deflate everyone's fans. You all think your team is doing great this season, right? And some of you are right. Some of you don't deserve to have your hype ruined. But I'm still gonna try. I'm gonna look at every Premier League club's points total after 28 games. And I'm gonna find the worst team in Premier League history who had the same number of points or more. Honestly, when you see some of these painfully average, forgotten teams from the past who actually had more points totals than your current team now, now, you might not be that impressed anymore. Right, let's go. Arsenal. Arsenal 2008. Look, everybody is in love with this Arsenal team right now. Yes, Mikel Arteta can insult as many dead Portuguese grannies as he likes. Who cares? The team is going places. A revolutionary, free-scoring Arsenal team. It's a team so good. It's managed to even silence the zombies of AFTV. Uh, I mean, that's impressive. But I hate to be an unhelpful toad. But... <sighs> Yes, the Gunners are currently top with 64 points. Don't get me wrong, that is brilliant, but, but, but. I mean, does any Arsenal fan have fond memories of the 07-08 season? No, of course not. That was the year Man United won the Premier League and Champions League. While the Gunners were a pathetic shadow of that Invincibles team from a few years before. That was the first season you had to make do without Thierry Henry. Arsenal fans probably have horrific memories of that supposedly soft team. Yeah, um... After 28 games, you had more points than this one. Top of the league on 65. Lads, that Arsenal team was nothing special. They went on a run in the springtime where they only won one of eight league games in a row to wind up in third. And Arsenal fans were beginning to murmur that Arsene Wenger was actually now about as tactically sound as burnt cheese. That was a soft Arsenal team who were dumped out of all three cup competitions in disgraceful style, conceding four at Liverpool, four at Manchester United, and five at Spurs. This current Arsenal side is great so far, but just be warned, it can all go terribly wrong very quickly. Aston Villa, Man United 2021. This Aston Villa team has been showered with ridiculously high hype. And to be fair, Unai Emery has done a marvellous job. But, oh, but. People have talked about them as being one of the most improved Premier League teams of all time. Look, to have 55 points from 28 games is good. But the way some people are talking, they're almost wanting to give Emery the freedom of Birmingham. I mean, to be fair, you'd probably say... No thanks. What does the freedom of Birmingham get you? Free burgers at 5 a.m. and any dead rat that you want? I hate to say it, but Manchester United had more points at this stage of the season three years ago. I mean, were they also being managed by one of the greatest tacticians in the world? No, um, they had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the wheel. Someone who looks like Gollum before he found the ring. Someone who was now hibernating in the Norwegian mountains, being offered jobs like the Norway women's team. I remember that Man United team being nothing special at all. I mean, they lost the first three home games of the season, including a horrendous 6-1 loss at home to Spurs. That was a team losing at home to bottom club Sheffield United in January. They failed to make it out of a very easy Champions League group. They bottled the Europa League final against Emery's Villarreal. The magic of Bruno Fernandes carried them to second alone. To me... That was still a very bang average team. And yet, statistically, still better than the supposed Emery super team. Yikes. Bournemouth, West Ham 2019. Look, I love the absolute magic of this Bournemouth team. They just became the first team in 20 years to actually win a Premier League match after being 3-0 down. I like Bournemouth. And yes, I probably would eat a chunk of Iriola's armpit hair. But I have to play devil's advocate for every team. So if I was to try and suffocate their hype, then... Well... They've got 35 points on the board. Yeah, West Ham had one more point five years ago. A West Ham team who were seen as a joke. Manuel Pellegrini was in charge of that hapless, inconsistent, nonsense squad. And at times, he must have felt like jabbing a fork up his nose. It was a squad filled with talent, but little heart. Marco Arnautovic, Philippe Anderson, Javi Hernandez, Jack Wilshere, Pablo Zabaleta. That was Champions League quality. And yet, they all seemed like they cared about the Hammers. About as much as I care about any JLS tune. Um, would sooner listen to a teddy bear giving birth. They lost 80 games that season. Conceded four goals at Wimbledon in the FA Cup. They were soft, brittle, and yet they still have more points at that stage than Bournemouth do now. Uh, Brentford, Leicester City 2017. Okay, this Brentford team might not have huge levels of hype, but I also don't think people truly appreciate how bad they actually are. When people think of the Bees, they automatically think of Ivan Tony, a powerful England international centre forward who exudes confidence and class. But people haven't bothered to notice that they've actually lost 65% of their league games since mid-November. Well, just in case nobody had realised how horrific the Bees have actually been, let me spoil it for you. Yeah, remember that horrible 
grisly Leicester City team from 2017. The most embarrassing Premier League champions of all time. They were so terrible. They even lost five league games in a row. Got their lovable boss, Claudio Ranieri, unforgivably sacked. And then woke up to win five league games on the bounce under Craig Shakespeare. That was a dressing room full of snakes, right? I'm sorry, was that the King Power Stadium? Or the Slytherin common room. This was the reigning Premier League champions who, in their final home game of the season, were letting their old reject Harry Kane score four. Where was their pride? A solid unit the season before. Here they were conceding three goals or more on ten separate occasions. Even losing 5-0 in the Hallow Champions League. Even then. That hopeless, hungover bunch of media villains who got a supposedly untouchable Premier League legend sacked just months after winning the title. Even they. We're better than this Brentford muck. Brighton, Reading, 2007. Everybody loves Brighton. Lads, Roberto De Zerbi has been recommended by Pep Guardiola for the Barcelona job. He is apparently on the Liverpool shortlist to replace Jurgen Klopp. It's like people still think this is September. Yes, they were third in the league after winning five of the first six league games. Great! But their former since fallen off a cliff. And don't forget, they were just eating like a plate of potato waffles in Rome. Considering some of the star quality players they have at their disposal. I'm gonna really drum home how average their season actually is. They've got 42 points from 28 games. Let me introduce you to newly promoted Reading from 2007. By contrast, I mean, they weren't lucky enough to have a Barcelona wonder kid like Antu Fadi on the wing. I mean, back in 2007, that equivalent would have been what? Giovanni Dos Santos? Anyway, newly promoted Reading, who had a wage bill smaller than the running cost of a nine-year-old's lemonade stand. They get 43 points from 28 games. I mean, was their manager, Steve Koppel, being nominated for the Barcelona gig? Going head-to-head -head in the interview process with Pep Guardiola? He'd have had better luck just asking Pep if he could eat his nipple hair for lunch. Reading had more points then than Bryson have now. Guess what? The Royals will be relegated within a year. Burnley, Aston Villa 2016. Look, Burnley have no hype. So this, this is easy. Those fans are under no illusions how bad their team is. But I'm going to drive the nail into the coffin even more. This is partly me mocking myself because I said at the start of the season, Burnley would finish ninth and that Vince Company is going to be successful in introducing a pretty Burnley to the world after their extreme makeover. But in reality, this just really does feel like a zookeeper clapping lip gloss and eyeshadow on a chimpanzee and trying to enter her intimate world. Yeah, you'll be lucky if the judges don't instantly vomit on the floor. Because Burnley are not actually rock bottom of the league, some casuals might be forgiven into thinking that they've not been that bad. Lads, they have less points at this stage of the season than Aston Villa had in 2016. I maintain that awful Micah Richards inspired Villa team. One of the most pitiful worst top flight teams I've ever seen in my life. A team who went through four managers that season, who ended the campaign with 11 straight defeats. A team who lost 6 nil at home to Liverpool with Julian Lescott tweeting out a photo of his car. That awful, unforgivable cat we stain on the history of this proud football club. They still had two more points at this stage of the season than the current Burnley won? Ouch! Imagine telling company back then when he was a legendary Man City centre half that he would one day, as a manager, produce a worse Premier League team than that joke Villa won? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Chelsea, Wigan Athletic 2006. I know. I know Chelsea. Have no real hype anyway. But this comparison is so outlandish, so surreal. To me, trying to comprehend that a team who spent over a billion pounds over the last two years are statistically worse off than newly promoted Wigan from 18 years ago? It's like trying to imagine a bunch of Chinese werewolves living on the moon. My, my brain doesn't compute. <laughs> you lads, you don't understand. When Wigan came up in 2005, words could not describe how much I thought they were going to be eaten alive, as if you throw a toddler into a hungry bear pit. They were the Luton town of 2005. The fact that they had more points after 28 games than the team who currently have not one, but two 100 million pound midfielders. Just what? That Wigan dressing room largely relied on just Jimmy Butter's pranks to get them through the day. They had 40 points from 28 games with Paul Jewell at the wheel. Allah, again, very weird. But Chelsea are actually trying to pinch his son from Brighton as chief of recruitment. But yeah, that measly little Wigan team who only had one truly good player in Leighton Baines then being higher than this jam-packed, mega-expensive Chelsea one. Honestly, madness. Crystal Palace, Huddersfield Town 2018. When you think of Crystal Palace, you think of their sizzling street ballers and wonderful style of football. Yeah, in reality, they have 29 points from 28 games. So what? Th that's not horrible, right? Nah, but it's not impressive either. Six years ago, tiny little newly promoted Huddersfield Town had 30 points. Like the Wigan team I just mentioned, that was a horribly bang average Huddersfield squad featuring no real Premier League quality at all. They were actually incredibly lucky not to go down that year. They were largely eaten like a roast turkey sandwich each and every week and the following year finished bottom as one of the worst ever Premier League sides. Apparently, as it stands, this talented Palace squad are statistically worse off than that. Yikes. Everton, Middlesbrough 2009. Look, 
this is mean and drastically unfair because Everton have been robbed of six points. But according to the table, they have 25 points from 28 games. Yeah, um, Middlesbrough, managed by a rookie weapon and at a Garrett Southgate, had um 26 points from 28 games in 2009 and got relegated. But yeah, this one is unfair because of the points deduction. So next, Fulham, Stoke City, 2017. Look, Fulham are seen as a bit of a dangerous wild dog. A team who can absolutely eat you for breakfast on their day. I think those two final wins of Craven College in early December sort of scared a lot of teams. And don't forget, they were also the last team to beat Arsenal in the league. So people are wary of Fulham and they are a decent team. But the cold, harsh fact is that they have 35 points from 28 games. Yeah, um, Stoke City had a point more in 2017. A Stoke team who were worryingly coached by Mark Hughes. And it was a bloated squad filled with big name has who looked like they didn't really care. I mean, come on, can you imagine if all of these players were in their peak? How good would a team featuring Stephen Ireland, Glenn Johnson, Saito Berahino, Marco Anadovic, Wilfred Boney, Ibrahim Afalai, Giannali Mbula, Jordan Shakiri, Peter Crouch, Bojan, and Shane Given could have been. But they were rubbish. And they went down the next year. So, sorry, Fulham. Liverpool, Man City 2012. Look. How do I strip the hype off this great Liverpool team? Because they deserve the hype. Like Arsenal earlier, 64 points of 28 games is great. Most teams who have that amount of points or more at this stage of the season go on to win the whole thing. This was a long search to try and find any example of a average enough team who had equal or more points. But I found one. Man City in 2012. Look, I know they won the league. I know that. But come on, Roberto Mancini's title winners were not a great team. A squad filled with superstars. They still lost on the road to Chelsea, Sunderland, Everton, Swansea, and Arsenal in the league. Were booted out of the FA Cup in the first attempt. They lost the League Cup semi-final. Finished third in their Champions League group. And were knocked out of the Europa League by Sporting Lisbon. This Liverpool team under Jurgen Klopp would absolutely crush that City one with Balotelli throwing straps up front. That was not a great City team. In fact, of their seven Premier League title winning City teams, that one was comfortably the worst. Come on, they were 10 seconds away from bottling the league at home to QPR. But Liverpool do have two points less than what City did at this stage 12 years ago. Luton Town, QPR 2015. The way people speak about Luton Town's greatness this season is starting to become bothersome. That I know we all want to see the fairy tale underdog miracle. But this Luton team Ain't actually that good. I mean, they just became the first team in 20 years to be given a three goal lead and lose. The way some people have spoken about the Hatters this season, you'd swear they were in the hunt for Europe. What if I told you that QPR had one more point at this stage in 2015? I'm specifically choosing QPR because the narrative was completely different. People talk about Rob Edwards' squad as plucky underdog heroes. Yeah. Everyone hated that QPR team, filled with expensive aging has beens like Rio Ferdinand, Richard Dunn, Sean I. Phillips, Bobby Zamora. Harry Rinnap had just quit due to dodgy knees. They were horrible. Ferdinand is embarrassed by that season. And yet, still had more points than the people's champion Luton. Man City, Chelsea 2007. Look, Man City are Man City. They are considered to be the greatest team in world football, and I would not disagree. But if I had to find something, well, they have as many points at this stage of the season as Chelsea in 2007, and Chelsea in 2014. The only two full seasons Jose Mourinho had as Chelsea boss where he did not win the league. They both had 63 points from 28 games. Same as the best team in the world now. Look at the 2017. That is seen as one of Mourinho's failed seasons. Remember the third season curse everyone talks about? So let me get this straight. His rotten third season at Stamford Bridge was statistically as good as Man City's one right now. Actually, it was statistically better in March 2007 because they just won a League Cup and would win an FA Cup in May. Yeah. Mourinho got sacked for that season. While everyone still wants to lick Pep's toes, I'm just saying, relax a little bit. Man United, Bolton Wanderers, 2007. This is too easy. Manchester United have no hype. They're not professing to have any hype. So this seems really needless, me choosing to stick the boot in. All Manchester United fans are proud of having 47 points in 28 games. They know that's not good enough. They're well aware. But just to really crystallize how average that total is, it is the same number of points that Bolton had in 2007. A horrendously average Bolton team who were very nearly relegated the following year. Right now, Eric Van Hag's work at Manchester United is on par with Big Sam's work at Bolton. Actually, Actually, not even, because Bolton only had one player in their squad who would get into Man United's current team, Nicholas and Nelka. That's it! And yet still garnered as many points? Oh boy. Newcastle, West Brom 2017. Oh, uh, if you had told me last summer, when Newcastle United just finished fourth in the Premier League, and had snapped up Sandro Tonali from AC Milan, that by March, Eddie Howe would have as many points on the board as Tony Pulis had West Brom seven years ago, it's not a good look. Newcastle had 40 points from 28 games. Yeah. 
so did the Baggies in 2017. A Baggies team with a spine of Foster, Evans, Fletcher, and Ronda. A Baggies team would finish off the season by losing seven of the last eight league games, would only score 43 goals all season long, never won three matches on the bounce, and who next season were relegated in disgrace. That. That is the comparative company that the richest club in the world are currently swimming in. That's scary. Nottingham Forest, whole city 2010. Let's get it right. Yes, Nottingham Forest have some good players, but 24 points with 28 games is pathetic. And to prove it, does nobody remember how atrocious Hull City were in 2010? Getting absolutely ripped to shreds every week, finishing the season off with Ian Dowie in charge. They were virtually relegated by April. Yeah, they had 24 points with 28 games too. Come on, Forrest, get the finger out. Sheffield United, Huddersfield Town 2019. Yeah, welcome back, Huddersfield Town, to the list. Look, Sheffield United know that they are dreadful, but if you needed any more reminders, you've got the same number of points that Huddersfield Town had in their truly awful season when they were cut adrift at the bottom of the league for six months, all on their own down the bottom. They lost 28 league games that season. Even their goalie, Jonas Lossel, was telling the world that he was sick of losing. They had 14 points in March. To be fair, I mean, they only finished the season on 16 points. So come on the blades. You cannot allow yourselves to be worse than that awful terrier side. Just win one more game or get three more draws. That's all you have to do. Just, just please, for your own sake. Just be better than that Huddersfield side from five years ago. For your own pride. Tottenham, Arsenal 2017. Look, I think the Tottenham are great under Andrew Postacoglu. But again, the different narratives in the media are hilarious. Postacoglu is a media darling. And being held up as football royalty right now for having 53 points in 27 games. So don't get me wrong, he deserves the praise. But did Arsene Wenger really deserve the ugliness that he got when he had three more points from 27 games in 2017? When the Arsenal families were the most toxic protesting outside the ground. They spoke about that Gunners team as being an embarrassment. And I suppose it was. I mean, that was the same month they let Bayern Munich score 10. But I still think it's funny. People think that Spurs are in an amazing place right now. And that Arsenal team were seen as a disgusting pack of unfit piglets. Well, they were statistically better then Spurs now. West Ham, Birmingham City 2010. Look, the West Ham fans are not hyping up their team right now because if I remind you that you have the same number of points that ugly, newly promoted Birmingham City had at this stage in 2010, Aru won Neanderthal, team coached by the primitive Alex McLeish, someone who is now seen as an old Scottish dinosaur. Ah, uh, that, that doesn't inspire much confidence in Moyes. Wolves, Sheffield United 2019. People are absolutely gassing up the work that Gary Neal is doing at Wolves. People are talking about him having 41 points in 28 games as being magical. He's not exactly reinventing the wheel. Five years ago, Sheffield United, newly promoted Sheffield United, had as many points from 28 games. Yeah. They went down the next year. You're not out of the woods just yet, Wolves. See if you can invite Red Riding Hood for lunch. Anyway, that's the end of it. Let me know in the comments. Have I been too harsh? Uh, let me know. Let me know what you thought. Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe. As always, I'll talk to you in a while.